welcome to this week's Premier League uh, review. Yeah, I'm not as frustrated with the Premier League weekend as I am with other leagues, but yeah. Uh, we have a few things to talk about there. Most not, no, not the play. I was a little bit surprised that the winner Crystal Palace sends Aston Villa on top of my... Uh, uh, you know, a change in expected points, but so be it. I actually love to wear this jersey, so there it is. And uh, Steven Gerrard having a pretty good start at uh, Aston Villa, showing you maybe a new manager bounce or maybe there is some more uh, there. And speaking of new managers, actually, before we go in, because I was almost about to make a video on that. And you know that I've uh, the last few weeks said I don't want to talk too much about Manchester United. Well, they made the right step by now uh, letting loose of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And to my surprise, and I was, um, uh, you know, thinking who could be a United man manager. And I was not I was never quite so uh, daring to say it. Or maybe I've said that Ralf Rangnick might be a good choice because, I mean, he is the one who actually started this whole re revolution with the gang, uh, gang pressing, so counter press, uh, the high pressing intensity style where you move towards uh, the ball, the entire shape and so on. He's the originator that inspired the Klops, the Tuchels of this world. So, uh, and it, to a degree also, of course, uh, then uh, Yogi Löw, uh, who worked on something similar already but you know he is the mastermind man he is the uh the originator in many ways and i thought yeah uh if united really wanted to build something it might be good to hire ralph Rannick as a coach let him take over there for a, a, a time set them up and then he moves upstairs and is like kind of a sporting director uh, and then uh, hires the coaches that he thinks are fitting for that. He did so at Hoffenheim. He did so at the whole Red Bull system with Salzburg and Leipzig. Uh, and leaves a rather great legacy there. The only thing that I have to say that goes a little bit against Ralf Rangnick, he has never won anything. I mean, he might be the originator, but I think he's maybe a tad too dogmatic uh there in many ways uh he also never got because he was the originator i mean he started at ulm um moved to schalke uh which was the big move there but then had to resign because of um you know personal health issues then he took over hoffman took them up leipzig um, um and yeah he was in talks with milan so i was rather so surprised to read i think on uh, Thursday or Friday that Ralf Rangnick is ante portas uh, at Manchester United and he didn't even deny it. Uh, right after, you know, all the Pochettino talk, uh, who was in Man 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 Manchester United, and very publicly kind of said, yeah, I would love to work for, for this club, blah, 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 blah. And I really thought this might be this, if Manchester United pulled this off, this might be the smartest way of going forward. I'm also thinking, yeah, at the moment it is German coaches. Not too long, long ago, everyone wanted to have an Italian coach who are technically worse than so on. Uh, but I think now it is, uh, thanks to Klopp and thanks to Tuchel, uh, it is very, very, very much German coaches that are highly in demand because of this very unique style of play. We saw it, how Klopp could turn Liverpool around. We saw how quickly Chelsea uh, was turned around by Tuchel into a, a veritable force. And maybe Manchester United see, yeah, maybe, maybe we're not only about the money, maybe we also want to be attractive uh, in some ways. Ralf Rangnick is your door into that style. Uh, the last thing I want to say is uh, many people are saying that, you know, with all this uh, high intensity pressing, blah, 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 uh, Chris, Cristiano Ronaldo might not work there. I saw a video and I was thinking even, even, even before that. I disagree with that because the intent is to win the ball high up the pitch and then pounce within a few seconds. And who is already doing that? Look at the Villarreal goal. Cristiano Ronaldo is in position there. He just needs to, uh, he doesn't even need to uh, high press that, 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 that way. He has to just position himself to block passing paths. Uh, and then if they win the ball, they give it to him and he has a free run on goal. I, I actually think that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo might work 
not too badly in that system because uh, of the way that you win high up the ball. So I think this really could be a change for the better uh, for Manchester United and, and, and I think it might actually be exciting because I've said it before I may not be the big uh, I'm, 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 I'm not a Manchester United fan but it may well be uh, it, uh, the league is always a better one if there's a good Manchester United there. After all this Ralf Rangnick talk, I would say let's jump into the league. Um, it started out on Saturday with an early win by Arsenal over Newcastle with Eddie Howe, another new manager, not having that great of start. I mean, it was the first time on the, on the bench, uh, being more or less outclassed by Arsenal, um, who scored two wonderful goals through Bukayo Saka uh, and Martinelli, uh, really well set, set up. And it could be that Arsenal is at the moment best of the rest. They are the top three. Arsenal, maybe. Uh, I know they were completely outclassed by Liverpool, but um, other than that, I think they starting to show sol solid form. Um, as I said, Aston Villa um, get back another win under uh, Steven Gerrard, a win that actually uh, moves them up the table slowly uh, and uh, into safer waters in many ways. Uh, target uh, very, 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 uh, very thought with the first touch he already had had messed it and then uh, McGinn uh, scored late to make it 2-0. I'm still wondering about the goal cell celebration. How much do we have to twist? I mean he did this uh, looked awkward, but cool, 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 cool. Another way, uh, Chris Pels only pulled one back uh, very late. Uh, Liverpool against South Southampton was one way traffic because Southampton decided to be very offensive and yeah, played right into the cards of Liverpool. Um, Ralf Haas, Haas Hassel is also one of the Rangnick uh, type um, coaches. I just feel that at Southampton he has reached his limits and I'm not sure, I think he stayed probably a little bit too long there. Uh, I think he did another job to, 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 to be honest and yeah, he was playing a little bit with fire. Jota and uh, scores a brace and then Thiago with his second goal for Liverpool, just scored this wonder, wonderful one against Porto uh, and then Van Dijk. It was one-way traffic in many, many, many ways. Uh, we had got uh, two goalless draws. Um, Brentford. And before I go, that's the other. That's probably even more worth a video for, for this channel. Brentford did something to, to put them even more into, yeah, my new favorite club in many ways. You already know, statistician, blah, blah, blah. They play exciting, da, 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 da. They decided, we'll keep the home jersey for the next season as well. What a great move. Bravo, 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 bravo. I hope this starts a trend. They say for, that it's more sustainable. I also thought uh, another thing is, you know, um, you might not have the new bounce, but if you're on the up, you don't need to sell off your shirts this season uh, for rather cheap, which probably hits the collector a little bit um, in me. But it actually means that uh, if you can sustain and more and more people want to buy Brentford gear, you can charge full price for that. So, I mean, there's also a business decision behind it. Overall, I think they deserve the win of uh, Everton from what I, 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 I could see, but it was an even Tony uh, penalty that in the end did it. Um, so Brentford and Everton, both teams were kind of uh, a few round, round, rounds ago really, really strong and they hit the skids. Brentford maybe uh, going up. Burnley and Spurs had to be postponed because of snowfall. Uh, Leicester for to a Watford and snowfall was also for uh, the uh, kind of marred a little bit the Manchester City against West Ham game. Uh, First half, I mean, snowstorm, <laughs> it ended, and it looked fun, it absolutely looked, lo looked fun. Ilke Gündogan and City being their impressive selves. Gündogan are scoring the only, only goal after Maris' goal has been ruled out. Second half was a little bit more open, but Fernandinho in the ninth, it makes it 2-0, and then Lanzini very late on pulls one back. But yeah, uh, maybe West Ham is coming a little bit down, but uh, you know, Okbono injury, blah, blah, blah. And then we had, of course, Manchester United, potentially last game uh, for Michael Carrick playing at Chelsea, being largely outplayed very, very defensively. However, a um, error by uh, Jorginho, where a clearance from man, man, man Manchester United, he wants to feel with, with his foot instead of uh, heading it, mishandles the ball because it was uh, really hard to handle suddenly Sancho and Rashford run clear on goal and Sancho decides I'll take it myself 
1-0 Manchester United. A little bit against the run of play, but then I thought, yeah, this might be the most typically Manchester United per performance as of late. Everyone thought they get hammered by Chelsea and they pull out that win. No, they did not quite pull, pull out the win. They get a penalty. Um, I personally hate uh, that fouls like that are... Uh, you know, uh, the challenge is like, like, like the Van Bissak. I mean, he tries to get, get the ball and hits Thiago Silva, who gets there a little bit first. It's accidental contact in a way. However, I understand by the rules, it's a penalty. So for me, it was, a, it was, a, it was clear that it's given, uh, but we may want to think about the rule. Jorginho, to his credit, he made the mistake. He missed high profile penalties uh, for Italy. Steps up and converts and this time he didn't change the run, the, the run up. And then Chelsea again was pressing and had a pretty big chance at the end. I mean, also United, there, there was another one where I think Monty played out and if uh, you, uh, if Fred would have done something better than just uh, lob the ball back to the goalie, uh, United might have well as won, have won it. Uh, Ronaldo actually not starting, came, uh, coming on late. Tuchel was also livid at one point when Ronaldo was clearly offside and then they earned a corner from that situation, but very late on they could have won it. Uh, it was a great interplay uh, that falls then to uh, Rüdiger who volleys it over the bar and so 1-1 one, one, and it's points dropped for Chelsea, honestly, but you know, uh, there's still a fight in United in many, many, many ways. So yeah, uh, the top of the table stays tight, Chelsea could have put uh, again the four point distance, but no, uh, it's a draw. So uh, Chelsea, United, and Liverpool are all within two points of each other, which makes it exciting, but also tips the scales very much towards Manchester City, who are probably the overall winner for the title race. There are lots of changes mid table, as you will see in my stats cast, which will come a little bit later uh, or probably tomorrow. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.